In this video, we're going to dive into one of the two new starter solutions that are part of the FileMaker 14 release. Now, Projects is one of the two starter solutions that's been upgraded for this release. And I've had an opportunity to sit down with the architect of this FileMaker solution, Nick Hunter. And Nick Hunter is one of the more brilliant people in the FileMaker community that I've had the opportunity to sit and talk with. And Nick has given me some insights into this project starter solution, and I'd like to pass some of those on to you. That way you can take a look at the project starter solution and maybe take it apart and learn from it. And whether you use it or not, you can definitely take it apart and use pieces of it if you want, maybe in some of your own projects. Now I want to be upfront about this starter solution. I consider this solution on the edge of advanced in terms of development skills. While FileMaker calls it a starter solution, the skill set that was used to build it is definitely on the advanced side. So that's why it's useful for me to make a video to kind of talk you through how some of it operates and how it was constructed because it's really slick and I think there's a lot to learn from in here. In fact, even in this video, I can't cover all the cool things that are contained within this new starter solution. So first off, I can be in FileMaker 14. I can say create a new solution from a star solution and I can select uh, projects and what this will do is it'll peel a copy of the projects star solution off and create it for us. I'm going to say choose and I'm going to save it to the desktop and here it is. Now uh, it starts us with a new project let's just call it uh, paint the house okay something simple like that. Now let's just talk operationally a bit about how this operates. I can add multiple tasks to this project and of course now we're on this task screen here so we can go back to the project itself and then we can see that we have multiple tasks over here and I can go back and edit this and this task is called maybe purchase the paint right and maybe we have to buy multiple different types of paints and the paints are going to be due on different dates here so notice that that we have a date here and it's a really easy interface right here to click on so that's pretty inventive right here. And then notice that down here we can specify by clicking down here that we're on track, it needs attention or it's at risk. And also right here that we can mark a completion state right here. So it's pretty straightforward. And this is a graph like a progress bar. Now this is not a graph in the sense that it's using the built-in graphing or charting capability of FileMaker. This is kind of a hack that's been built and it works pretty slick but I just want to show you how we do this. And then if I go back to paint the house, of course, we can go over here and we can see that now the percentage has been updated over here and we have this uh, graph has been updated over here and we show that we have six days left. So as we update this material over here, this information over here, it can update it in a smaller summarized fashion, which is pretty slick. Now we can also add resources if we want. We can say, well, what's a resource? Well, um, a resource is a person generally, right? So we could say we're going to add... Mark, last name, uh, Thompson, right? And there we go. So I'm going to grab a random photo here and put it in here. Ooh, that's not very square. There's Mark. And I can go ahead and say create. And notice how it's very clever here, but uh, Nick has been able to set it up so it is set up as a rounded icon. Very clever, right? So we have a resource set up here and we can say done. So now that we have resources right here, we have our tasks that we have here, and we can go back to our project. So notice right here that for this project we have one task going, we have one resource assigned. We can also go in here and we're currently logged on to this project as a guest. And so we can actually log on as Mark or I can create another contact and I can say this is Sally Brown and I say great here's a picture of Sally and once again it's a little bit distorted there I say create and it straightens it out and rounds it and so now I want to say I want to go ahead and log in and pick the name of the person we're going to log in as so there's no security per se but actually it allows us to log in as different people so we can log in as Mark we can log in as Sally and then once we're logged in uh, we can make notes about things so I can go in here I can create a post I can type something in here if I'm, I'm logged in as Sally we can say paint is too expensive at Home Depot 
Maybe that's true or not. I like Home Depot, but maybe Sally thinks the paint's too expensive there. So she posts something here. And then we can log back in. It's a multi-user solution. We could log in as Mark and we could say, he sees this and he says, um, put a response, I'll check it out at Lowe's. Now this is just overly simplistic, but we add these things. And so suddenly we can go back to the project and we see up here at the top, we actually have these three items right here. This is the new button bar or button bar tool and it's actually three different elements up here and notice that it contains tacks of different size and different styles and as I resize the window it automatically scales the size of that object to automatically distribute the space as necessary it works this way on the iPhone, the iPad also on mobile devices like Android devices in WebDirect it's really cool so I can select on a resource, I can see the resources that are attached to this project, I can see posts that are attached to this project. So it's pretty slick. So we actually have the button bar functionality that's right here. Additionally, if I go to tasks and look at these a little bit, the button bars are also in use right here. Now this is really interesting and I talk about this in our FileMaker Pro 14 video training course at learningfilemaker.com, but I can cover it here a little bit as well. This is a four button button bar, but it's being used as a control style. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I go into layout mode, a control style is where you can select a field and you can specify under the data tab that you're going to have a control style. Control style is edit boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, things like that. Well, there's no button bar as a control style where you could have a value list and then it takes on the number of items right in the value list well Nick Hunter has set this up as a button bar so what happens is I'm gonna move this down out of the way and we're gonna actually look at this one right here this this top there's two layers here and I'm gonna look at this top layer right here this is actually a button bar and it actually is automatically set up to look at the values of a value list. So if I right click and I say button bar setup and I can click right here, I can see that it's looking at the tasks badge value list. So I go over here and I want to take a look at the tasks badge value list. And here are the values that we have for these button bars here automatically. So I can change these uh, pretty easily right here. I can say on track, say I wanted to change this to looking good, right? And then of course up here I don't want to actually make this edit right here. I just wanted to take a look at the value lists that are available under there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to browse mode and look that it t is automatically taking on those values because what it can do is it can take on the values at different positions of the value list. Okay, So this is actually a pretty sophisticated uh, solution. Now the mechanics of how this works is a little bit deeper than what we have time to dig into the video here. But the short version of this is that this is a different sort of use than what most people would assume you'd use a button bar for. Okay, Most of the button bar would be buttons that you press and then things are activated. And I'm going to insert a merge field here. What this button bar is doing is actually doing nothing more than running a set field command to set into this field right here. So as I press this button right here, all it is is running a set field command, set field command, set field command, set field command. So this acts very much like a radio button, but in a different visual form factor. Whereas a radio button, we could click normal and it would put normal up there or looking good or attention or at risk. This works the same way as a radio button, but it looks completely different. So then you ask yourself, well, how do we get the coloring to work in here? Well, that's handled completely by conditional formatting. Well, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to ungroup this, and then I can click on that button right there. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say conditional formatting. And then you can actually see that the conditional formatting is right here, and I've moved this over. If this formula right here 
when it's looking at the value of that value list, that the value three of the value list matches what's up in here, then it takes on this color right here. So it's a little bit obscure, but it's actually simply setting a fill color through conditional formatting. So that's how it sets the background color and gives you a visual indicator that that button needs to be you know, illuminated. So pretty straightforward. So the sequence is actually you press the button. In fact, if I run this in script debugger and you watch what happens here, I'm going to actually press right here on attention. Now notice when I first press it, the button is gray. It's not any other color because right now that field is still looking good, right? And attention is not equal to looking good. This button will only change color when this word attention matches up there and it doesn't yet. It's looking good does not match attention so this color hasn't locked on yet. Now if I progress forward and I say step in, it's going to set that value. Now attention matches attention. This changes color. This no longer matches so it goes clear. Wham! And you're set. So that is the use of button bars as control styles attached to value lists with conditional formatting. Really cool stuff. So that's one of a bunch of cool things that are part of the project starter solution that's part of the FileMaker 14 release. So that's it for this video. I look forward to seeing you next week with another video.